Sue Hitzman, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you today. I'm excited to have a nice conversation. Today, we're going to be focusing on employee fitness and wellness uh, more generally, like in, in a broad sense and talking about some of those types of issues uh, in the workplace. Uh, but we're also going to be talking more specifically about what to do when you're in a desk job and sitting at your desk behind a screen for a good chunk of the day, maybe the majority uh, of the day or all day. How do you what do you do in order to make sure that you're maintaining good physical, mental health uh, as you're in that kind of an environment? Uh, so we'll explore that. And that's your area of expertise. As we get started, I wanted to share Sue's bio with everybody. Sue Hitzman, a nationally recognized educator, manual therapist, exercise physiologist and founding member of the Fascia Research Society offers these uh, offers short videos on improving posture while sitting at your desk and tips on getting rid of back pain while working. Sue is the creator of the MELT method, which helps people get out and stay out of chronic pain for a lifetime. Uh, just 10 minutes of melt three times a week is all it takes to reduce the effects of accumulated tension and stress caused by daily living. She, she understands one of the most important aspects in the body is the connective tissue, and by nourishing it, chronic pain can be prevented and skin can even become more youthful and re-energized. She is dedicated to helping individuals melt away chronic pain and stop it before it even starts with this self treatment designed to help people also stay healthy, youthful, and active for a lifetime. And of course, we're going to be talking about all of this within a workplace context and how we can make sure that we're taking care of ourselves and as leaders that we're taking care of our people so they can be their best self and be productive at work. Sue, uh, anything else you would like to share with us by way of your background before we launch on into the conversation? No, I think that you said a mouthful right there. That is exactly right. You know, I mean, I think, um, educating people on what causes pain to become chronic and to give people the tools and, and some strategies to be more proactive rather than reactive to their aging process and their lifestyles, I think is really important because most of us think we're proactive, but really we're reactive. We do things to help ourselves after we've got a problem, not really before we have a problem. So uh, changing that mindset has been, I think, one of my defining moments in my life is just to try to get people to understand what it is to be proactive. Yeah. And in any walk of life, right? <laughs> uh, whether it's physical, mental health, whether it's productivity in the workplace, whatever, being proactive is, is a, a really uh, important thing to learn to develop in ourselves. Um, okay. So let's talk about some of the negative health impacts uh, certainly chronic pain being one of them, but what, what are the things that can happen when we're stuck in the office, at, at a desk, in a chair, staring at a computer all day long? I, I mean, I think we all already kind of know it. I always say sitting is, is like, I call it the desk sentence. Uh, we are literally sitting ourselves to death. And the problem with the, a seated posture, it's not just being sedentary that the problem is, is really the cause and effect of it, but the actual posture of sitting alters the stability of our core, our actual central system. It decreases blood flow and circulation. It decreases the volume of diaphragmatic motion, uh, which is so inherently important to just our over mental and physical well-being. Um, it can decrease just our ability to be resilient. And over time, it is one of the significant contributors to back pain. And what's unfortunate about that is people, when they get up out of their chair, they're like, oh, my back hurts me. And what do they do? They sit back down, which is the vicious cycle of back pain is that standing up is painful. And then we continue to sit. And over time, I think it causes quite a cascade. And, and um, if anybody is dealing with a chronic pain in their body, it is exhausting to be in pain all of the time. And so our mental well-being, our emotional well-being, and our overall stability is what declines. And this is, again, an important concept for people to understand that the just the posture of sitting is what's so detrimental. Not even just the duration, it's really the, the, the posture that we take while sitting is, is what really causes an effect to the spinal column, our nervous mm. system, and our overall well-being. So what do we do about that? Because work it has been designed, um, you know, we, we could get into the background, the history of all of this and, and uh, all of that. But 
the work has been designed for most people in, in the knowledge economy to be sitting at a desk, staring at a screen for 10, 12 hours plus a day, right? Uh, and so we have then we have all this cascading effect like you were talking about in terms of all these, these negative health outcomes for individuals. And even if as an employer, I'm not super interested or, or I don't care, I don't have empathy for my people and their physical health, but I'm interested just in like dollars and cents productivity, uh, there in and of itself is enough of a reason for people to care. <laughs> uh, it's You're going to be more productive. You're going to have more productive people. Your organization is going to be more successful. So you should care. But there's also the human case and we like want to treat people as people and we want them to, to be healthy. Um, so that should matter too. But if we can recognize the importance, then then what are like some some basic things we need to start doing right away to, to make this better? Yeah, I mean, you're saying so much there. I mean, the amount of lost productivity, first of all, in the work area because of pain is excessive. And when you're in pain, it does decrease your productivity. So, um, you know, employers should care about what the well-being of their client of their of their workers are because if they're feeling good they're going to be more productive so you know in this day and age we have the stand-up desks I have one of those where you know my my desk elevates and sometimes I stand sometimes I sit but a couple of really basic things that you know anyone can do where it's it shouldn't be your employer that's trying to really help you you should be proactive and, and understand that just from day to day you can do things to keep yourself feeling good. So number one, if you have to sit at a desk all day long, every 30 minutes, all you need to do is literally physically stand up, put your feet back on the ground, and just bring your arms as high as you can overhead, get your body as long into an upright posture, and just take the fullest breath you can take, and then drop your arms down and exhale, and do that three or four times, and then sit back down. If that's all you do is every 30 minutes, just get up out of your chair and I call it reach for the sky, reaching your arms up, breathing, dropping your arms, breathing again, fully exhaling three times or four times and then sit back down. That's gonna improve circulation, blood flow. It's gonna decrease any type of pressure against the heart, the diaphragm that could actually inhibit the blood flow that from occurring. So simple things to do. Another thing is you, you nailed it. You know, John, it's like you're, if you're looking at a screen, the actual narrow field of view that we have, we don't realize how much vision is inherently linked to posture alignment and mobility. And so if you're constantly at a screen, if you could just at some point in your day, get up and look out a window where you're looking at a longer depth of field for just a few minutes a day would inherently help your overall well-being. Or, or at the end of a workday, getting out into nature and just breathing and putting your feet on grass and then breathing fresh air. All of these things are so critical and simple to do. It's not like you have to go out and exercise or go to a gym or have a membership and spend two hours at a gym. Just 10 minutes in the afternoon, just get up off of your chair and just go take a walk and breathe and think about the beauty of your life and how much joy and abundance you have and try to be grateful for something. I think those things can really offer an exceptional amount of well-being and resilience to our body if we have a day job that requires us to sit most hours of the day. These are simple, simple. Yeah, things. super simple. And I, and I like how you're focusing on, um, first and foremost, I need to take responsibility for my own health, right? Um, now, would it be wise for employers to do this? Absolutely. Should a good leader be looking out for their people and encouraging things like, um, you know, doing stretches and taking breaks and, and uh, getting out in nature, all that? Absolutely. We should be doing that. But will they do that? I don't know. That uh, it depends on the organization. It depends on the culture. And so whether your, your boss and your leader is going to do that or not, you, you can take responsibility for that. And you don't have to lose productivity during those times. I mean, I, I think of all the different things I need to do during the day. Some of them require me to be sitting or standing in front of a desk um, doing work on a computer, right? Um, but I don't know many people who literally have to be at a computer and, and, and looking at a computer screen all day long. You have to take calls, you have to go to meetings, you have to think about stuff, right? So anytime you're doing these other things are a prime opportunity for you to stand up, to walk around, to stretch, to 
to do whatever. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of time, like you mentioned, and it can make just a huge, huge difference. I think of, uh, I have two daughters, uh, two teenage daughters that both work at In-N-Out Burger. And I think of their corporate policy around employee physical wellness. Uh, and, and I think, wow, they're, they're kind of progressive in this area. So my daughters, they have to, I think it's like every 20 minutes, they have scheduled stretch breaks every 20 minutes. <laughs> this is a fast food restaurant, right? Um, mm -hmm. But but they invest in their employees, they pay them well, they have good um, uh, health benefits, and they just, they want their employees uh, to be taken care of. And so it's a simple thing, like take two minutes, every 20 minutes, take two minutes, pause, do your stretches. So they, they have, they have a whole range of uh, stretches they do with their hands and with like all these different things that they do. And it, it takes almost no time, but it, it, it just helps them stay uh, a little bit more uh, active. It helps them to to, uh, to be more mindful about their physical health. And, you know, they're, they're, they're at a job where they're standing, where they're walking around, where they're moving. So it's not like they're even at a desk all the time, but they've, this company has prioritized um, these sorts of things to make sure that their employees stay healthy. They recognize the dollars and cents cost of it and what the savings that they get from it, but they also understand the benefits to their people. Yeah, and also, you know, the the beauty of what you're you're actually saying is that time that people are taking to care for themselves, you you know, it doesn't take a lot. But what you have to remember is that life is repetitive. Whether your repetition is sitting at a desk, or you're an athlete training for a sport, or you're working at In and Out Burger doing the same thing on a bus line, it doesn't matter what it is. Repetition is the blessing and curse of our performance over a lifetime. It's what makes an athlete great at, you know, hitting a ball with accuracy, but it is also what accumulates the most amount of tension and stress mismanagement, tension and compression mismanagement is the repetitive nature of our lives. So whatever it is that you do the most in a day is what is going to cause the effect of your body to adapt and if you want positive adaptation, then you need to do positive ad adaptable things. If you're doing something all of the time one way and you actually know it's probably not that great for you, then we need to supplement that. And in the workforce, if your employer isn't doing it, I always feel that what about getting an accountability partner? Just getting a friend and saying, hey, for the next, I'm trying to get myself into a routine where every 30 minutes, I'm trying to get up out of my chair. Would you do this with me? And let's see if we can do it and just text me at, you know, every 30 minutes and say, I'm up or something to help me out. And so having an accountability partner, uh, when what you're trying to do is break free from the repetitive nature of your life is sometimes the best, the best opportunity for any to have because most often when we have something going on in our body again especially if it's pain it's a very lonely place to be it's very isolating and work in and of itself can be very myopic and isolating so I feel like it's an opportunity for us it's almost an invitation to find a, you know somebody to be more resilient with, and, and again, have that accountability with somebody. I think it would be very helpful for people in the workforce to find their buddy, just like we did when we were kids crossing the street. You had to find your buddy in school to, you know, change rooms or whatever. I think we could do that same thing in the workforce. And I think it would also create camaraderie and friendships. And I think that, again, that also brings joy to people's lives. And when you're joyful, you have happiness and it, it makes, you know, you have a happy life, which I think is most critical in general of yeah. in general, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I love that, that tip of just having a, a wellness buddy <laughs> to work with, hold each other accountable. It's so easy to get caught up in your day and to, even with the best of intentions to just forget uh, or to just think, oh, it, you know, I'm just so busy. I just, I'll, I'll do that later or I'll, you know, I'll, today is not a good day, but I'll do that tomorrow. Um, man, we fall into those traps all the time. And so just having a simple um, kind of accountability structure set in place by having a, a wellness buddy uh, can make a big, big difference. Absolutely. Um, so I'm curious, I, I know that one of the things um, that I read about in your bio is what you call the MELT method. Can you describe that for us and, and how can we utilize the MELT method as we're just trying to get started in our, our fitness and wellness journey? 
Yeah, MELT is a simple self-care methodology to help people restore the supportive qualities of their connective tissue system called fascia uh, for one sole intention is to improve stability. And when I say stability, I don't just mean how well you balance on a BOSU ball. Fascia is the supportive infrastructure under your skin that stabilizes everything, bones, muscles, nerves, organs. It is the tension compression management system of the body. It's actually the biological fabric that we develop in from the embryo on out. And uh, what MELT does is it addresses the accumulative stress that occurs in our connective tissue that can ultimately lead to pain. And so we use soft balls on the hands and feet, uh, as well as soft body rollers on the body to apply gentle tension and compression to restore the fluid perfusion in fascia. Uh, most importantly, to just help the nervous system function more efficiently so that we feel good as we move. And one of the foundational uh, products and treatments of the methodology is the, is the hand and foot techniques, which the beauty of that is they're small balls that you can use right at your desk at work. Uh, melting your feet can actually help for low back pain. If you had neck tension, the very first place you want to start are your hands. And it's nice that you can just apply self-care without having to, you know, have a lot of equipment or change your clothes and you can do it at your desk at work. And it really just improves the state of your body and how your body moves and functions. So, you know, MELT is, I think, a beautiful, uh, very 101 rudimentary methodology that addresses the two systems of the body that diet and exercise are not focused on, which is, again, your fascia and your autonomic nervous system. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's just a really great point and, and some good insight there on what we can all be doing starting right now today. Um, now, over time, you know, should we have a more holistic um, health plan in terms of our physical health, our mental health? Um, yes. Uh, you know, we should be having regular check-ins with doctors. We should be taking appropriate medications. We should be getting the exercise we need um, to stay healthy. We should watch our diet. Like all of these things holistically go into what makes a healthy person, uh, all the mental health stuff. Um, but you're absolutely right that we just need to start somewhere. Uh, and especially if we're, if we're just so trapped in a sedentary lifestyle and, and stuck at our desks and we're just not used to these, these sorts of things to just start with some of the basics, uh, and, 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 and do those consistently. And, it, and all of a sudden you start to feel better and then you start to feel like you're willing to tackle some of the bigger stuff. Right. Yes. Well, you, you know, and you said it earlier on, and this is really important for people to hear that when we, when we think that we need to change something, oftentimes we'll say, you know, I need to do that. I'm going to do that tomorrow. And what that is, is not living presently. And if you want to transform your life, it happens right now. And most often when people have, um, anxiety or depression or just mental dis, dis ease, it is because we are ruminating in the past or we are so afraid of what's going to happen to us in the future that we miss the fact that nothing is happening in the past. Nothing can happen in the past. It's over. You can't even fix it. So the more we ruminate on it, the, the more we lose the opportunity to transform our future because the future is being developed on what you are doing right now. And so the opportunity for us is to say, why do I keep waiting for tomorrow to come to change my life? Because the reality of it is tomorrow is always in the future and you never actually get to it. But if you say, I'm going to right now in this present moment, transform my life by being more present in everything that I do, that is the starting point of better mental well-being, better physical well-being, because what you're doing is loving yourself more. And when we love ourselves, we can love others. When we give to ourselves, we can give to others. But nothing happens in the future or the past. It all happens right now. So we can use the past as information and reflect on it instead of ruminate on it. And we can manifest our future by believing that right now, the things I am doing are actually the things in the future I want are already right here. I'm building the future by thinking I have it already. That's, that's the starting place that 
I think people need to ground themselves in is that you have it in you if you do it now, if you keep believing you'll do it tomorrow, you're you're losing the preciousness of of your conscious ability to transform. It's happening now. You can, transformation happens in the present moment and nowhere else. Yeah, well said. So so practicing self care, um, being mindful and present uh, with where you're at right now uh, that makes all the difference in the world. And I guess my question would be, what's like what's the first step we can do to disrupt ourselves, kind of get ourselves out of perhaps our, our comfort zone, uh, what we're used to in terms of ruminating in the past, looking to the future uh, and not being present and just being stuck in uh, you know, our current mode. How do we get out of that so we can be more mindful and present? I think a couple of things. I think one is to give yourself permission to go into your body and really sense what you feel and start to, start to answer one question. You ready? Everybody should write this down. What I am really wanting is, and answer the question, what I am really wanting is, and a lot of people will say, I'm not really sure. And I'll say, is it okay that you're uncertain of what it is you really want or need to get you into a better place? Because if you can at least be okay with the uncertainty, that right there is, is transformation because we get stuck in our uncertainty. So if we can change our mind about our particular state of being, that's the first step out of uh, the, the wallowing in our misery, or I can, or I this, or they did that to me, and whatever it is. And it just changes how your circumstances is how we perceive our circumstance and, and own our present moment. That's the, that's the step. So really giving yourself permission to go into your body and sense what you feel and being, being um, okay with the fact that sometimes we are not liking what we feel like. We're angry at someone. We're afraid to express our feelings and our emotions because my gosh, if I said this to my partner, I might actually get a divorce because I'm going to speak my truth, but that's just it. If we're never speaking our truth, we are losing the, the human experience, right? We are, we are here having a human experience, which is fleeting. It comes and goes so quickly. And, and if we don't honor what's happening right now, that's really just, it's that simple, is just to be present and find yourself loving your life because you, you love yourself. That's really the first place. And, 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 I, and I get it. Some people are going to be listening to this going, gosh, I don't know how to do that. And I'm going to say it again. Is it okay that you're not sure how to love yourself better? And just sit with that and realize what that means to you. Because in the moment that you just take that pause, that's love right there, is that you're giving it back to yourself. And that's where it starts. It's a slow process. But, um, you know, being around people who motivate you, being around inspirational people, um, don't be around toxic people. Try to shed the toxicity uh, that you have, and and just be okay with the, with the shedding. and uh, And don't don't fear your life. Your the universe loves us and is always trying to guide us towards prosperity, abundance, and joy. That's my belief. I'm going to stick to that. <laughs> that's what that's what that's what changes things. Yeah, I love it. I love it, Sue. This has been a real pleasure. I really appreciate all of your insights, your expertise, what you shared with me and my listeners. Uh, we're about out of time, but before we close today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, find out more about your work, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Sure. So uh, if you want to find out a little bit more about me, I would go to the website, meltmethod.com, M-E-L-T method. Um, I'm also pretty active on Instagram under the handle Melt Method and Facebook also under Melt Method, always laying down some wisdom and trying to give people some self-care strategies so they can thrive in their bodies and lead an active, abundant life. Um, and again, I would just say from the main note of what we're talking about, get up off your chair and breathe. Give back to your body by putting your feet on the ground, get out into nature. And um, my three tips for everybody is sip water frequently, eat water-filled foods, and every day reach out to one person that you love that might not be somebody that you talk to all the time and just tell them that you were thinking about them. Put some positive energy out into the universe and it will give back to you that same love. 
Love it. I love it. Thank you, Sue. It has been a real pleasure. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected, find out more about uh, what Sue and her team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.